All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is these proxies. We're gonna actually home the ball screw servo that we've been doing. We're gonna to home to this prox right here. Now I've added two proxies to the actual uh, system. And so what we're gonna do is actually incorporate that and show you how I did that so that we can now use our homing feature uh, again in our state logic, right? We originally had homing features, but we swapped from a Kinetics 6000 to a uh, Kinetics 5500, and that's using the SIP motion protocol. So again, when it comes down to it, you cannot home to torque on that. So what I ended up doing was I open up properties real quick for the ball screw and go down to homing. I can show you this. If the servo is not running, you can easily see that you can change these features. Um, currently, the where the prox is mounted, when it homes, it's at the marker of 28 millimeters on my scale. So I wanted my program to run the exact same thing that it ran before, you know, Z from basically from 10 to uh, 200. All right, in our case, being that we're in centimeters, one to 20, right? So I still wanted to do that. So with that said, what we're gonna do is we, we put that in there as the position of what, where it's gonna be in the physical world when the home switch is ha it actually transitions. And we have uh, our switch is a normally closed switch. So as you can tell, uh, the, no the normally closed switch is off right now. Um, but as with this said, the direction that we have as travel uh, and the speed is actually the same. Only thing we changed here is the way we're homing is it, we went from immediate to actually using a switch. Now using a switch again, it, this is, uh, it depends on if you're using a normally open or normally closed. I am using a normally closed. How, and, and just to speak uh, real quickly on how I wired that. So um, this is a two wire prox, okay? So basically I have my common coming into uh, the common on the Kinetic 6, or, or Kinetic 5500, and then I have the return on input one. So it's a two wire prox. I don't have to have anything else to that. I just put 24 volts to the actual prox and then get 24 volts back. But how I interpret that on my Kinetic 5500 is I have my common, which is my negative of my 20, 24 volts, have my common attached to the common on the actual Kinetics 5500. A lot of people assume that you uh, automatically get this control voltage from the Kinetics 5500, but you do not. Uh, so with all, that said, with all that said, let's go ahead and uh, test the system and actually sh uh, see how this actually works. I'm going to start the system real quick. And you can see that it's at the home prox right now. So it's going to actually run and then it's going to start running up. So you can see how that works. You can see that it, we do hit our points. So let's go down and show you that we do hit our points. You can see that we, we do stay within the, the one, which is the one centimeter to 200 or to 20 centimeters. So that's 200 millimeters right here. So we, we travel the same amount of travel, but we all we did is we offset our home position because of where our prox was. Now, what does the system look like if it wasn't already resting on the prox switch? Like say if I stopped it. Okay. And then I started it back. What's the very first thing it's gonna do? It's gonna come back in and it's gonna home down to the actual prox. Now, if you note this bottom piece right here, which is what we've been referencing as our position, is going to be down here and it's gonna be about 28. And that's when this prox will measure, will actually get and, and make contact. It will make contact closure. So as soon as it happens, it goes ahead and skips to the next stay or the next step right here or the next uh, state we have in our state machine. And then it continues on back to its process. 
So that's the way I actually programmed this actual home of the actual uh, using these two little proxies. Now the proxies again are something that I've got uh, from eBay so they were pretty there they could the tolerances they're really really kind of tight they could be a little bit better I'm probably going to order another set I just wanted to show this as a representation of how to do this and hopefully this was really helpful you know in, in guiding somebody into actually you know letting them see how this process works and the very top one just so everybody knows the very top one up here is an over travel okay so this very top one is an over travel um, currently I'm, I do not have that wired up I do not have that programmed because just because that's the next step in the process is to wire that one up watch the over travel make it over travel and how to recover from an over travel so again when it comes out down to it I wanted to actually give like a more of a, a bigger view of how the system is actually wired right. again the bottom one this bottom prox right here is a home prox it doesn't matter when it's if it's not in the homing sequence it can be made any given time so that's how we're getting by with running past it right here is because it does not have to like it's not gonna rehome just because I made that prox it's only going to rehome if it's in the homing process and it hits that prox. So there's there's multiple effects here. You can actually change the functionality of that prox and have it like an over. Uh, you can switch it from an over travel to a homing prox. But there's some logic behind that, and there's some changes you can do on that as well. So again, I uh, just wanted to show you how the system is working now, how the functionality of it is working. Again, with the PLC code that we have written and again hopefully you found this helpful and you've you uh, learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one